Flip to Freedom, episode number 52. Hello again, this is Sean Terry from the Flip to Freedom podcast, and we are on episode number 52. Now, if you are listening for the very first time, I'd like to welcome you and let you know that I have designed this podcast for you. Uh, to help you escape the 9 to 5, get out of the rat race, quit your job, be done with corporate America, and uh, and live the life of freedom, to go out and do what you want to do when you want to do it. Now, you're going to learn how to do this, to quit your job, get out of the rat race, by flipping properties in your spare time, Um, by quick turning real estate, using no cash, no credit, I don't care if you don't have any experience, you can do this business. And uh, what is quick turning real estate? What is flipping houses? Well, flipping houses is basically finding a motivated seller. That's the key thing. Now, the motivated seller can have equity. They don't have to have, um, they can have a lot of equity, right? They could have minimal equity. They could have no equity. As long as they're motivated, you can structure a deal. Once you do that, then you find a buyer. You could find a cash buyer, you could find a retail buyer, or you could find a buyer that is looking for seller finance cash flow properties. And what you do is you put the two together. You simply sign a contract with a motivated seller, and then you sign a contract with your end buyer for a higher price. For an example, let's say you sign a contract with a motivated seller. The house is worth $100,000 and they owe $95,000, right? What do you do? Well, you agree to give the seller, say, $95,000. You're going to keep that loan in place. You give the seller $1,000 cash, right? So your contract with that seller would be keep your $95,000 in place for five years. I'll give you $1,000 cash. And uh, you sign a contract. That's it. You don't give them $1,000 cash. All you do is sign a contract. Okay? So then what you do is then you turn around and you find a buyer that wants to live in a house, wants to live in a neighborhood. Maybe they can't get financing. Okay? Maybe they can't qualify for a loan. So you say, hey, listen, okay, Mr. Buyer, you put $10,000 down and you'll be able to get seller financing for $95,000 for five years. You structure that deal, you get a contract now from your buyer with a deposit. You bring that to your title company, um, you have them structure the deal, right? Structure and doing a wrap on the existing loan of $95,000. Now, the buyer comes in with a $10,000, right? And they're going to pay closing costs, let's say that's another thousand. So they're going to bring in a cashier's check to the closing agent for $11,000, of which a thousand goes to closing. One another one thousand goes to the seller, okay, and the nine thousand dollars goes to you. You get it now. This is why I love this business because if a property has no equity, you can structure a deal. If a property has a lot of equity, you can make a fortune. And then if a property has just okay equity, you can still make it work. The caveat is is to find a motivated seller, okay? And now I have, you know, uh, 51 different episodes here in iTunes that you can scan and listen to, and I literally lay it all on the line. I tell you how to find motivated sellers, how to find buyers, how to structure deals, what to do, how to do it. I answer all your questions. I do interviews, case studies with other people um, that uh, are in the business that have um, are part of what's called, I have a, a Flip to Freedom Academy. It's an academy of exactly how to do this, uh, step-by-step detail. And, um, and I interview them and kind of, they, they pretty much spill all the, exactly what they do. So uh, that's the whole idea, the premise behind this, this, um, this podcast is to show you, first off, number one, is first off how to go out and get your first check. Okay, Maybe you're brand new, you're just getting started, you're just getting part of real estate and you want to go out and say, hey listen, how can you make money in real estate with no money? How can you make money in real estate if I have bad credit? How can I make money in real estate if I'm working my full-time job? How, 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 how? Well, guess what? That's what all these episodes are about. Okay, So 
the first thing to do is, is to show you how to go out and get your first check. Once you get your first check, then you go, oh, that relief of it works. Right? And all the doubt goes away. Then it goes out how to go out from where you are to go out and replace your income. How to go out and get one year's worth of income in the bank as fast as possible. Okay, That's the next goal. And then once you do that, then you will have the option to quit your job or not. Okay, to Decide. Well, do I want to quit? Or maybe I just want to stick it out and I want to get two years worth of income in the bank. The beautiful thing about it is you get to decide. You know, now for me, I had a complete dead end brain dead job that I completely hated, I wanted to get out of, you know, and this was my escape route. This was the vehicle that got me out of the rat race and uh, flipping properties. Now I flip properties full time um, and I work with students all across the entire country teaching them and walking them through and participating in real estate all across the entire country. I bought and sold over $120 million worth of real estate, you know, over, well over 500 uh, transactions that I've done by taking this concept, the simple concept that I just talked about and doing it over and over and over again. Now, in this particular podcast, we are going to talk about um, a day in the life. Because, you know, I get a lot of people in, and they, that ask me and say, what's your life like? How do you, you know, what's your typical day? And see, I uh, read one of my favorite books by Donald Trump. Um, it's The Art of the Deal. And, and part of that, part of the sections there, he kind of laid out his day, what he did at you know, six o'clock, and what he did at four, five o'clock, and what he did at eight o'clock in the morning, and then ten o'clock in the morning, and then you know, in the afternoon, what he do? What was? What does day look like? And I, I remember being intrigued by that, just to see what you know, how Donald you know, kind of did his day. So that's what we're going to talk about um, in this particular episode. I'm going to give you pretty much a timeline, what I do during the day, and you know, and kind of how I how I uh, structure goal setting and stuff like that. So you can kind of see, you know, what kind of you know, dictates my day all, all the way through. So um, we're going to talk about that. The also what we're going to talk about um, toward the end is going to be, you know, some of you might have, um, you know, have tripped across real estate or even tripped across this podcast and you start listening to it and you got excited about it. Oh man, man, this is great. And you got all excited and you start talking to your friends and your family and I'm doing this, man. I'm, I'm quitting my job in 19 weeks or less. I'm done. I can't wait. Right? You get all excited about it and you're ramped up, ready to go. So you start good putting forth the effort, man. You put out some signs or whatever. You send some mailers or you do this. And you start taking those action steps full throttle ahead. And then something happens. Maybe you don't get the result that you expected. Okay? Maybe you, um, you know, maybe you... Uh, um, maybe you, you know, you're, something happened, you, you went on vacation and you came back and you kind of got tripped up. Um, maybe you, um, you know, you just, you know, you know, you got slammed at work, you know, and you had to do a bunch of stuff and you just couldn't get the time to do something and you pretty much got derailed. I guess you could say. You know, it's almost like this. If you ever worked out, start working out in the gym, and on January 1st, you feel excited, and you're like, I'm going to go out. This is the year. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be in great shape. I love it. And so you start working out, you eat right, and everything goes good, and then you have a bad weekend. You start to drink too much, you eat too much ice cream, whatever it is, and you're like, oh, Monday comes around, and you're like, you know, I just, God, I just can't do it. I just, you know, I just can't do it and you lose your momentum well what we're going to do is talk about exactly how to gain the momentum back how to if you got derailed how to get back on and then put forth the energy and create the effort and uh and go out and do it again how to go out and 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 start uh basically uh getting your engines going getting your get your wheels turning and uh, get back in the groove again um and start cranking it out so that's what we're going to talk about because you know what it happens to everybody it happens to me you know, especially as you go to the gym and, you know, some days it just, you know, and as soon as you miss one day, then you miss another day, then you miss another day, then a week passes, then two weeks passes, you know, and some of you might be listening to the podcast and you're just like, yeah, and you start doing it and you do letters and then maybe you didn't get a deal that you're expecting or you might, something happens you were, you were expecting that didn't happen and, and, uh, and then, then, then you're like, oh, I just got to, 
you know, maybe I'll just, you know, it's harder than I thought. Maybe I'll just keep my job, you know, and not get out of the rat race. But all that excitement was there, and now it's gone. So how do you, so the question, we're going to answer this, is how do you, if you got derailed and you're excited, and then how do you jump back on? How do you get back in? How do you get back in the groove? How do you get back into and in getting yourself back going again on the right track? So that's what we're going to talk about, because it's not easy. I can tell you right now. Um, and uh, we'll give you some tips on how to do that. All right. So for now, I'd like to, uh, if you'd like to learn more about me, I created a book. It's called, um, uh, it's, it's basically you can quit your job in 19 weeks or less. You can go to flip the number two freedom.com flip to freedom.com. You can go there. Um, and, uh, you'll see a video of me just put in your email address and I'll email you a special link where you can download this, um, this book for free at flip2freedom.com. It's a 129-page comprehensive detailed blueprint, which pretty much maps out exactly how to quit your job in 19 weeks or less. Okay, and you can get that at flip to number two freedom.com. I also like to recognize um, someone that actually went into iTunes. They actually searched in the iTunes store and they found the Flip to Freedom podcast. Either they searched real estate investing and they found me at the top there. I'm like number one or number two, um, or in, or they searched. Um, just flipped to freedom and found the podcast and uh, and a uh, gentleman went in there or someone went in there I don't know if it's a man or lady on May 22nd um, but it's Vicasa 826 um, and uh, they gave me a five star rating I got 53 five star ratings it said good info with amazing motivation I do not have words to explain how Sean's podcast is helping me understand the RE business, real estate business, in step-by-step -step detail. I can't believe how selfless he is. His knowledge and motivating words make you feel super confident. I am following his instructions in setting up my business. Thank you, Sean. Or Sean, thank you very much for your help and your support. God bless. So that is the, uh, and I really appreciate someone actually going in there. And I thank you for going in there and submitting that review and taking the time to do that. Um, within the reviews there, uh, iTunes actually ranks you um, in there based upon the reviews and stuff. So uh, again, thank you so much for going in there and submitting the reviews on that. Okay, now let's get into it. Let's get into the day in the life. Now, that's kind of a weird podcast because, you know, I, I usually like it. If you look at, listen to all the other 50-something uh, episodes there, I, I just try to pour out as much detail as I possibly can on exactly how to do this business and answer questions. And I'm always surveying my email list and trying to find out, you know, what's, what, what, you know, what's holding them back, what's the, what's the obstacles, and then be able to discuss that in the podcast. But, you know, I did have in the last survey I sent out, you know, what, what, what would you like to do a podcast on? And there was a huge response and people going just the day in the life what's what's your typical day like and uh and that's what we're going to get into today so all right so let's talk about um first thing in the morning well well let me give you this first off <clears throat> this is the big overview the big picture and then it kind of it kind of shows you how it how my day kind of breaks down now what i do at the beginning of the year of every year is i take a global uh, a, a, a pretty much an uh an annual goal a big goal and I write down everything I want to accomplish for the year. Goals. Okay? Everyone knows about goals, right? You know, the problem is some people write down the goals and then they just never do anything about it. So how do you how do you progress toward those goals? Well, what I do is write down everything I want to accomplish for the year, the type of income I want to make, the the the, the big goals, the things that I want to accomplish, the things I want to do, and I just write everything down. Okay, everything I want to accomplish. So I put a big annual goal. And then what I do is break up that goal into quarterly goals. So I've got four um, goals of where, what I want to achieve by a certain time. Okay, I want to achieve X. Out of my annual goal, I want to achieve these specific things um, each quarter. And then what I do is take that quarterly goal and break it down to a monthly goal. And then I take the monthly goal and break it down to weekly goals, and then I take the weekly goal and break it down into two, uh, into a task list, into things I need to do at big tasks. Okay, um, we're not really big tasks, just tasks. 
You know, so so what is my you know what what does my month look like? Let's let's start from there. So what, for the month, what I do is I, I I basically look at what I did the last month and make sure I accomplished everything what I want to do for the last month, and that rolls over into month two of whatever I didn't accomplish. Okay, uh, so now for the month, I have my list of everything I want to accomplish this month, so I can reach my quarterly goal, so I can reach my annual goal. Um, so I have everything for the month I want to accomplish, and I break it down for the weeks. Well, you know. Well, first week I want to accomplish this. Second week I'm going to accomplish this. Third week I'm going to accomplish this. Fourth week I'm going to accomplish this. So that's what I want to accomplish for for the month. So that first week now, I break it down. And then um, what I do is on Sunday night or early Monday morning, um, I go through and for that week... I break everything down that I want to do for that week, okay? And I break it down into to-do lists. So I have on my iPhone, I've got this, um, what app is it called? Can you, it's called Key Tasks, okay? Key Tasks, it's an app in, in iPhone there. And I basically take everything down and I write everything I want to do for the week. And I take everything from my, my, uh, my, my weekly list of everything I want to accomplish and I just pile it in there. Now, there are things that, you know, I have to do like, you know, I've got a, you know, I've got to get a haircut, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I've got to wash the car or I've got to, you know, take my wife's car in to get it washed or I've got to get air in her tires or I've got to, you know, I've got to do this or I've got to do that. You know, you know, there are life things that I usually take for the daily stuff and I just put in there too. Okay. Now I prioritize what's cool in, inside of key tasks. So what I can do is I can prioritize them as high priority, mid priority, low priority. So all the things I want to accomplish that are high priority or things maybe um, that are uh, personal things that I have on there that are high priority that I have to get done, I'll put all the high priority things and those are what I'll work on for the week. Okay, so you can kind of see the picture of where, where, where it breaks down to then, you know, what does a day in the life look like? A day in the life looks like now of, of taking those daily tasks and then being able to work through them to a weekly goal, to a monthly goal, to a quarterly goal, to an annual goal. Okay, so that, so that's basically what I work off. So I'm pretty much focused, you know, on exactly what to do. Now, do phone calls come in? Yes. Um, do I have to block off a certain amount of time to accomplish X, Y, and Z? Yes. Yeah, I do. Um, just like anybody does. But um, but but I, I pretty much have free reign, you know, to do whatever I want to do. So. If I want to go golfing for the day because I cranked down, I get a bunch of stuff done or whatever, and I want to reward myself and go golfing or go hang out by the pool and, you know, and just catch some rays or whatever, or go uh, go to a, you know go see a baseball game in the middle of the afternoon and go check out the Diamondbacks or whatever, boom, I'm there. You know what I mean? Because why not? You know, I have the ability to go go watch a movie in the afternoon. I haven't done that in a while, but hey, let's do it. You know, so so uh, so that's what it, you know. That's what it'll enable you to do. Now, what I do is I just I, I want to make sure I accomplish everything, and and I'm pretty. You know, with my goals, I got some pretty big goals, and I've got some pretty big quarterly goals, and I got some pretty big monthly goals and pretty big weekly goals. So I put a lot of pressure, maybe not pressure, I put a lot of expectation on myself to produce, um, producing. So why? I don't know, because I love it. I love doing what I do. You know, I love talking to people. I love doing real estate. I love doing deals. I, I love it. I just love it. So to me, it's not like work. It's just like, you know, you wake up and what, what do I want to do today? You know, and, and I, have a, I have my list of things I got to do and things I want to accomplish, but it's not like I'm dragging my head. I'm beating my head against, well, I, just, I don't want to go to work today and I want to sleep in. No, man, I'm popping out of bed and I'm like, let's go. You know, so... So, so let's start from now. So now you get the bigger picture. So now let's, let's take a day and a typical day and a day in the life. <clears throat> All right. So now I usually wake up around like say 6.30 or so. Um, I wake up, I don't know. I just wake up 6.30. I'm, I'm wide awake and, you know, and have a fresh, uh, I usually make coffee the night before. So I have a, I have coffee rare to go, um, at uh, six 30 in the morning. And there's nothing like having a fresh cup of coffee with coconut creamer. You know what that is? I mean, have you guys heard of that coconut creamer? 
It's like it's like this little cre- it's like creamer stuff, and I know some of you are going, "Oh man, this guy's a this guy's a freak." He likes coconut creamer. I just don't. I, my my wife got me hooked on it. It's like unbelievable. I mean, we like we bring it to our house in California. We can't go anywhere without it. We bring it on vacation, whatever. Hey, who's got the coconut creamer? Okay. So anyway, so we we've got this coconut creamer, um, and it's so good. It's almost like you know Hawaii. But um, so I take the coffee, put the coconut creamer, and at six thirty, um, what I t- typically do is I pray and uh, and I usually um, I usually that's when I spend time now some of you might be listening you might believe in God you might believe in the universe you might believe in um, whatever you're going to believe in the bottom line is for me you can pray you can focus or you can do you know whatever you're going to do you know if you want to kind of duplicate this but you know for me I pray and I and I spend time and I reflect and I you know and I you know, pretty much just, you know, center myself and focus and, and, uh, you know, I pray for everybody listening to the podcast. I pray for everybody that's in the flip to freedom Academy. Obviously I pray for my family and kids and stuff like that. But, you know, I, uh, you know, pray for things that, um, I'm wanting, and I'm definitely thankful um, for you know everything in my life, and and because I let's put it this way, I attribute a lot of you know, actually everything that I've ever accomplished or ever done or ever been able to have or do or whatever on God. I can tell you that right now, and that's just flat out because it's not me. It's just because there are leads that come in that are unexplainable. There are things that happen that are unexplainable. And I can tell you, when I'm off track with that, you know, you talk about getting off track in your business or getting off track in the gym. When I'm off track with God, things just don't work out. I make bad decisions. I do stupid things, you know. Um, you know, and, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm just an average everyday guy, just just like everybody. I'm nothing special. You know, I don't live in a big bazillion dollar mansion or whatever. And, you know, I'm just an average guy going out there doing real estate deals and happen to share it on a, you know, on a podcast, you know, so in iTunes. So, you know, it's it, so the, the bottom line is, is that is that, that that's where I attribute a lot of my success and um, or just, you know, or things you know, and, and look, guys, let me tell you this. I don't look at myself a lot of the way that you guys look at me because, you know, uh, because I'm just like an average everyday guy. You know, I have a wife that I screw up and I mess up and I do stupid things. And I've got kids, you know, that, you know, I go do kids and go to conferences and do things, and, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, I look up at people that I see and I, that have accomplished great things. I'm like, oh, my gosh, they, they, they must be different. There's no difference. There is no difference between you and I. The only difference is, is that I'm just a little bit further on the path when it comes to real estate. But you know, if I step in your specific job or what you do and what you're great at, man, I'd be fumbling all over the place trying to figure it out. You know, so you know, so just just know that you know. For me, I attribute a lot of that success. It's 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 like I said, a lot of that success goes to God and what He's done in my life and stuff like that. And and uh, and for me, it's been an absolute blessing. So that's what I do in the morning between about six thirty to seven seven fifteen seven fifteen or so. I I focus and I pray and and um and and that's what I do. Now around seven fifteen or so. Um, uh, you know, I usually from that point forward, I kind of focus on my day and what do I want to accomplish. I put everything in my in my to do list what I want to accomplish for the day. Um, so I would take my I have my master to do list that I do at the beginning of the you know the beginning of the month or the beginning of the week, and then you know, I just add to it of things that I have to do for the day or check off the things I've already done, and kind of get focused on what I want to accomplish you know for that day. And I reference that particular task sheet literally you know 10 times a day okay boom I got this done I got this done I, ch- I just and you just check them off I got this done. Okay, boom I got this done. oh man I really got to do this I got to find time that I got to do this I got to call this person back and I go through and that's what I do through my day so now that's around 7 15 or so <clears throat> 7 15 to about 7 30 7 45 well 
my my kids get up around seven, and I got a I got a twelve year old and I got an eight year old, both girls, um, and they go to school, of course, and yeah, they get up at um, around seven forty five, um, and I'm there. I make them breakfast every morning. Um, whether it be cereal or hard-boiled eggs or scrambled eggs or they love omelets, especially the ham and cheese omelets, um, and I make a killer omelet. And uh, so I make them some omelets and get them, you know, whatever, and you know, my wife gets them ready and stuff. And my wife and I you know, rotate each day um, on who takes the kids to school because they, they go to school right up the street. So we, uh, we drive them up to school, and after they have a good hearty breakfast, jump in the car, take them off to school, and they're at school by 8.30. Okay. Now, obviously, this is different for the summer, you know, summer months and stuff, because it changes a little bit because there's no school. But that's typically what happens. Take them to school. So now it's 8:30. So what do we do at 8:30? Well, 99% of the time, I go to the gym, and I, uh, I'm a member of a country club right up by by my house there, and uh, my my Arizona house. And what happens is, is I go to the I go to the country club, and I go there, and I, you know, I work out. I do, you know, the elliptical. I do whatever whatever workout I have. They have some good you know good uh, machines. I do some free weights. I do some elliptical. I do some running. Do whatever it is. I just kind of change it up. So I usually do that for about about forty five minutes or so. Um, so that's about you know we're talking about you know eight forty five to you know say nine thirty or so. And uh, but then um, I, I get out of the gym there and I walk all around the entire campus and it's right on a beautiful golf course with these unbelievable lakes with these beautiful houses and and uh, and the grounds are completely manicured they got the tennis courts out there so I usually walk all the round and you know what. And oh yeah, by the way, when I'm doing all my workout stuff, that's when I'm listening to all these po- that's my podcasts. I listen to all these different podcasts of the things, you know, like Real Estate Guys Radio or these other pod- podcasts on internet marketing and these things and, you know, and I t- keep up on all the uh, all the podcasts. I, and I really like going to, you know, the gym and really devouring, you know, the podcasts. But now when I go for the walk, um, when I'm done the gym and I and I do like a power walk around the uh, campus there, around the uh, country club there, I uh, turn that off and then I just reflect on the beauty of the day and the beautiful flowers and the beautiful green grass and a beautiful day and and uh, and just am uh, I am just filled with gratitude um, for everything you know for everything you know that's happened now you know what happens if you're really not you know you're just like disgruntled well you, there's always things you can find gratitude for and I can tell you this you know what you want give. If you want love, give love. If you want money, give money. It's, it's, it's a spiritual law of success. You know, if you want to feel happy and feel great, then be happy and be great for someone. And part of it is, is feeling gratitude and just feeling the, the gratitude of life and everything like that. So, you know, to hear about that, the attitude of gratitude, you know, and that's part of it. So I, I usually walk around, you know, walk, I'm doing this power walk around the thing and I'm, I'm feeling gratitude for, you know, for uh, everything. I'm just thankful for, for everything. So that's how I start my day. Now it's about 10, 1030 or so, run home, I grab a, you know, a healthy breakfast, you know, whatever I mean, but I usually use some fruit or an apple or some or whatever. Um, and then boom, I'm in the shower and then I'm off to do whatever I do. Now, the day um, will be dictated by a couple different things. One of whatever's on my to-do list, right? And number two is what motivated sellers am I talking to? Okay, because now all the leads come in from all the different marketing sources. They go into a central source, um, which is uh, all the calls are answered or called back. They go to a voicemail system and they're all called back, um, but either by myself or an assistant, usually an assistant, which then she'll uh, take them and separate them to either motivated or non-motivated, right? If they're motivated, right, then those go in the Freedom Soft, which is a software program I use, and they're marked and they have all the information in there. Of what they do and how they do it and what they're, you know, why they want to sell and what their mortgage is owed and what they're looking to get out of the property and all that stuff, right? If the property's vacant, I'm trying to, you know, so there's specific keywords that they um, will know that they can tag it motivated, right? Now, if they're not motivated, then what they do is they get, um, they get it added to our, um, our um, squeeze page, basically where they get put into an auto, a one-year autoresponder series um, that automatically every single month 
um, they will get an email, an automatic email from me that will go in there. Now what happens is people's motivation over time will increase. So we get their email address, their name, their phone number and stuff like that, all that information. Now they're going to be tagged a different color inside of um, Freedom Stuff. Like red's going to be hot and gray is going to be you know, kind of non-motivated. So I, the basically they're separated between motivated and non-motivated. So what I do is I go in there and I look at for the motivated. And then what I'll do is then I'll call back the motivated sellers and those motivated sellers are the sellers now um, that I'm going to focus on. Now what I'm going to do with those motivated sellers is I'm going to do either a soft pass, which I call I'm going to make an offer, or if they are highly motivated then I'm just going to go on the appointment, I'm going to go meet them and I'm going to go get the contract. So typically anywhere in any given month I go from anywhere from 5 to 10 appointments and my closing ratio is about 90%. I don't go on an appointment unless I can know the deal. I get, I get pretty much, I get the uh, deal completely negotiated over the phone. <clears throat> All, you know, done. I mean, I get it. You know, I find out what they are, the motivation, what they're looking to get for it, what pricing. I, I do a soft pass on the property and, and then I'll go look at the property. Sometimes I don't because they're out of state. Right, and I'll get the contract before I even go look at the property. You know, just just depends. You know, it depends on what's going on. So depends how busy I am. So that's what's typically. So now, um, when it comes to the real estate part of it, now what happens is I go get the contract, and then from the contract, then it goes through the rest of the process. It goes out to the marketing. You know, which I have someone do. I have you know, I um, I uh, goes through the closing process where I have the title people. They pull all the information, put everything together, contact the sellers, contact the but you know, I get the property sold. They make a couple phone calls, get the property sold, they put it on my site, um, email my my uh, my buyers list, you know, have someone do that, put that all that information, get the property sold, and then um, and then make the spread in between. A lot of properties don't even hit my website because we'll get it under contract and I'll sell it um, on a phone call before it even hits the site. Actually, probably about eighty percent of the properties that I sell don't even hit the site. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I know what people are want, and I have such a good relationship with a, a handful of buyers that I know what they want. And I mean, I got buyers just calling me all day long, going, "Hey, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got?" So as soon as I get something good, I'll call them up and say, "Hey, I got this. It's going to go out to my buyers list of thirty-two thousand people here in the next forty-eight hours. Go check it out. Let me know what you think." And typically they'll go check it out and I'll get a contract within within that 24 hours and I'll, I'll get it sold. So that's that's typically what happens. That I forward that contract onto my my uh, escrow there and they'll follow the process and get the deal closed. Okay. So now let's go back. So that's that's 10 o'clock. So that's what I'm doing. I'm and now I'm scanning through there to figure out who's motivated and who's not motivated. Now what if there's no leads in there that's motivated? You know, motivated sellers and there's really nothing happened in that. You know, that particular day for appointments or people call. Well, guess what? Then I, you know, I'll focus on what deals do we have in the pipeline that are closing that are in the process that need any attention to, right? Or you know, if there's nothing that happens there, then I'm going to go through, you know, and maybe start working on my task of things I want to accomplish whether it be you know increasing marketing or you know increasing you know maybe marketing for you know the flip to freedom or something or whatever so then I go through my day and it's pretty much dictated by what's happening you know through the deals and the transactions um, I also too if coaching students some of the coaching students how I prioritize then I will be calling my the coaching students and if they call in if they have a message or like that um, or if they have some concern or they shoot me an email I'll always uh, focus you know on the next priority is the all them to make sure that their uh, all their questions are answered and, and we're working through them getting helping them get their first checks um, and then after that you know, I'll go through and um, and then I'll, I'll any other try to phone calls. I try to you know follow up with people and phone calls. I try to make you know, and I get about you know, almost 200 emails a day. So I get I try to go through the emails and stuff of what's going on. Um, you know, but I try to yeah, I try to focus on you know what's going to move me forward and what's going to accomplish that weekly goal, monthly goal to get me on track. Now those are things that are typically um, done not you know. They're, they're, they're things that, that are going to move me forward to accomplish the goal, but, it, but it's things that could easily be blown off until the next day, blown off until the next day. So if I have those in front of me on my little you know, iPhone list, of my, my little task list of what to do, it keeps me to where, okay, I want to accomplish this today. This is one thing I want to accomplish, so then I can check that off the list so I feel uh, good that I've accomplished a lot by Friday and I get the, uh, have a good successful um, uh, 
profitable and uh, and, and and good week. So that's kind of how I, I go through. Now, now it's about say you know three thirty four o'clock or whatever part of the day um, and then you know I try to be home for the for my kids depending on what I'm doing um, if I'm at appointments or anything like that then um, then what I'll do uh, I'll usually be home anywhere from three thirty to five o'clock you know and I'm I'm the one that usually makes dinner so we usually make dinner um, whatever it is, or we'll go out and grab something. Love doing barbecue. Love doing barbecue chicken. Kids love the, you know, I make this killer barbecue chicken that they love. Um, you know, and, it, and make dinner, right? We make dinner for the kids, get everything, you know, all good, have dinner, have, um, you know, they get their homework done, they take their showers, and kind of wind down around between 9 and 9.30. Kids kind of just wind down, you know, and uh, either watch some TV or just hang out and relax and just uh, and get their homework done or do whatever. And then they're off to bed between like 9:30 and 10 o'clock, you know, and and then that is that's done. That that's a that's a day a, a typical day in the life, you know, for me. And it's um you know the beautiful thing about it is you have the freedom to do what you want to do. Now, could some days I go, hey, you know what? I'm 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 going to the baseball game today. Sure, some days I wake up and you go, hey, listen, you know what? I'm, I I busted out. It's a Thursday or it's a Friday. Man, I cranked out this week. I'm going golfing today. Yeah, let's go golfing. Call up a couple buddies. Let's go golfing. The problem is, is that most of my buddies they work jobs. So I got a you know I got a couple buddies that that are flexible. They are in real estate too, or real estate agents, or whatever. That I can go hang out with them, um, and uh, and do golf or whatever. Like do lunch with my wife or go get do whatever we're gonna do. But um, you know, but but the the beauty about it is you get the freedom to what you want to do. Now, the other thing is is that for summers, summers come around. It's great because summers we go out to the beach house, and the beach house is, you know, in uh, Dana Point, California. It's one. It's right off the PCH. It's right. To a walking distance from um, the Ritz Carlton has its own private beach, private tennis courts, a gated community, um, and it's just exquisite. I mean, exquisite. It's unbelievable. Um, and uh, I mean, there's houses in this community that go from you know twenty million to thirty million dollar. I mean, I mean, and I don't know what the heck these guys do, but but you know, I don't need a big old giant thirty million dollar house. But you know, I just like going out there because it's a blast. You know, to go out to the house. They have tennis courts. They have swimming pools. They have you know spas. They've got their own private bluff out there that we can go hang out on for Fourth of July. And I get to see fireworks from you know from our bluff, and I get to see Newport Coast, and I get to see Dana Point Wharf and stuff like that. So I get to see all those different. Things. And, and we go out there and just go out and have fun with the kids. And guess what? The beauty about the way you, know, you can structure this business is that you know especially if you're working with other people that you can turn around. If I get leads coming in, I can just pass them on to my guys here. They'll take the leads and they'll get the contracts and they'll work with them, put them through my system. It's still going and uh, sell the property and then and then uh, split split profits. You know, so it just the cycle just continues to grow and start building it. Um, so so then we go hang out for the summer and we go do you know do whatever we're going to do hang out by the beach and um, you know I still take phone calls out there I obviously bring my computer and uh, you know do stuff out there but um, you know summers are a blast but you know those are the choices you get to make and the things that you get to do when you're you know flipping houses <laughs> you know flipping houses and doing this business now I structured my business different you know because um, I wanted to do it to where I felt the need that I wanted to do a podcast and give back and help other people. And uh, and that's why I wrote my book, a 129-page book to give away for free and then put out this podcast where people could listen to it, take the information and apply it in their business and go out and become, you know, become successful, you know? And and uh, and then I created the Flip to Freedom Academy where I have people that go through an entire 19-week program. It's all high-definition video in there and it pretty much walks you through step-by-step step and exactly how to, one, get your first check, how to, two, replace your income, how to three, scale it from full time, and then how to four, to do exactly what I do, how to create the four-hour work week for real estate investors. And that's being able to work with people all across the entire country. And that's what I'm doing with the Flip to Freedom Academy, is I'm creating coaches within the academy, people that are documented success, and being able to help them build their business to where they can coach people all across the entire country and participate in real estate exactly the same way I do. So that's that's pretty much the entire process of exactly, uh, you know, what 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 happens and how my how my day works and, and what it looks like. So. 
That's the day in the life. Um, if you wondered, I know it's not too exciting, <laughs> you know, um, you know, but it's uh, it's not like I'm going to Beverly Hills and I'm eating caviar and I'm, you know, going shopping for this and my limo in here and no, it's not that. It's just you know, I'm just you know, you know, I'm just a 41 year old guy that's having fun flipping houses. You know, teaching people and 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 uh, you know through the podcast and through um, you know through the membership site and through Future Freedom Academy as well. All right, so now <clears throat> enough of that. Let's get into what if, or the answer to the question is that what if you were on track and you're excited and you're motivated and you're cranking and you need to listen to the podcast. I'm going. This is doing it. You send out some letters. You get up and going. You, you, you put forth the energy, and maybe um, maybe something happened in your expectation of what you thought should happen didn't happen, and you get let down, right? Um, and then you you kind of lost momentum, or you had to go on vacation, or you got swamped at work, or something happened where you got derailed. Well, let's try to get you back. You know, on track is what they say, right? Get you back on track uh, to where you can feel okay about it. And if I can push you over the edge to basically get back on track. Now, first thing is this. First thing, you got to give yourself a break. <clears throat> it's okay. It's okay to get off track. It happens, okay? It happens to me. It happens to everybody. Everybody, you know, gets excited and says, okay, I want, I'm going to start a new path, okay? I'm going to start, I'm going to escape the nine to five. I'm going to quit my job in 19 weeks or less. I'm going to, I'm going to do this and I'm, I'm, they, they get motivated and you might be even part of the Flip to Freedom Academy and you might have joined the Flip to Freedom Academy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to crank it out. I'm going to, I'm going to go through the videos and then you miss a week and then you miss another week and then, oh, now there's a lot of stuff you got to catch up on and then da, da, da. Hey, it's part of life. It's okay. There's no mad rush. Okay? There's no mad rush where you have to do it. So first off, give yourself a break. It's okay. It's okay to start from where you are. It's okay to start again from where you are. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is this, is how you rekindle the fire how you rekindle that desire how you rekindle how we, how how you how do you basically create that that burning desire to go out and take that next step because you know, you've you've heard the age old adage right an age old story of if you want to eat an elephant you got to take one bite at a time. If you want to go from here, where you are, to say, wherever you want to go, success, it's one step at a time. If you look at the, if you, you know, if I'm here in, you know, Arizona, I'm going to drive to California, it's about a five and a half hour, six hour drive, right? If I was going to walk that, now I'm just going to walk my way to, to Southern California. If I looked at the whole thing, oh my gosh, this is going to take me ever to walk it. I just, nah, 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 nah. well, guess what? It's good. It's, you know, it, you're just never going to want to get started and get off the couch, you know, to get to California. But what if, what if California or success was all that it was made out to be. All that it was made out to be. What if you could accomplish that? See, you got to look at it to where you go, okay, how do you rekindle that passion or desire or motivation to get you off the couch, to get you to the next step, to basically into action and this is the way this is what I do okay what I do is if I if I do that what I have to do is I really have to see the end result I have to see it I've got to feel it I've got to you know believe it and I've got to really really be crystal of what my end results gonna be so how do you do that well what you do is you write down almost like what you know what your life will be like if, okay? Now, what if you had a successful business flipping properties? 
And what if you were able to flip, you know, five to seven deals a month? Let's call it five. And what if you were making an average of $5,000 per deal? And you're flipping five deals a month. Well, there you go. You're making $25,000 a month. Right? And you have your system set up and you have your marketing set up and you're taking motivated seller calls, you have someone taking them for you. Right? And you get to go look out at houses and you get to be outside and you get to go do the kind of ebb and flow of the day of what you want to do. Right? And you're making twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a month coming and going as you please. How would that feel? If you wanted to go on vacation, you didn't have to go request it from a boss. You could just go. If you want to go like next week, I mean, the, the, we're leaving this, what, Friday? We're going out for the next week. We're bringing some friends out there. A couple groups of friends are going out there to go out to, to our beach house in California. We're going to hang out. We're going to play tennis. We're going to go to the beach. We're going to go to Disneyland. Let's do it all, right? Why not? But did I have to go put in for it with a boss and say, can I take off for the week, please? Because I want to go hang out with my friends and, you know, No. You know, I just got to clean, you know, we just got to plan it, right? Got to plan it with the wife and plan it with, the, you know, people going out there. You know, so the bottom line is this, is that what if, put yourself there. Put yourself living, breathing, acting like you're there, like you've done it, like you've accomplished it. What's it going to feel like? What's it going to be like? How would you do your day? Would you wake up early in the morning or would you sleep in? Would you go to the gym in the morning and take a fresh walk in the morning and you know, start your day around 10 o'clock or so? What would you do? You know? What would you do if you had the freedom to do what you want to do? What, if, what would you do if you didn't have a job? What would you do if you didn't have anybody to answer to? What would you do if you were you know, flipping houses? What, what would you do if you, you were at the point to where you had you know, 20 cash flow properties and you're making $10,000 a month on cash flow and they had all equity, whether you wake out of bed or not? What would you do? See, that is possible and a lot more in this business. That's possible. So the bottom line is this, is that, is that you have to basically put yourself there. What would it feel like? What would your life be like? What would, the, you know, what, what would that be like for you and for your family? And see, once you put yourself there and really dive into it, and this could be early in the morning. Maybe you wake up in the morning. Maybe you wake up tomorrow. After you listen to this, wake up tomorrow morning. Wake up a little bit early. Grab a cup of coffee or whatever you tea or whatever you do. And sit there and just put yourself, just see it. And write down exactly where you want to be. Where is point B for you? Because see, you might be at point A. See, and for me, I'm at point A. I'm, 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 and I'm still going to point B. So I put myself at point B. I see it. I can feel it. I, I, I visualize it. I, I, I want it. I, you know, I'm moving forward just like you're moving forward. So, so you're at point B and you want I mean, at point A and you want to be to point B, you have to define clearly and you have to see exactly what point B is and you have to put yourself there. So after you listen to this today, go tomorrow and wake up early and put yourself... Before all the kids wake up, before the wife wakes up, before the family wakes up, everything, get up early and then put yourself in, in point B. What would that be? Success for you. What would success look like for you? What would it? What would success be like for you? Now, it's amazing if you sit down and actually write it out. And see, don't have, well, I can't do that because of this. I can't do that because of that. I can't, uh-uh, no limitations. If you could have whatever you wanted to have and do whatever you wanted to do, right, what would success look like for you? And write it down. That is going to rekindle the fire. Then you go out and say, okay, well, what steps does it take? If you don't know what steps, go to flip2freedom.com, download my book.
Okay? I give it to you. Lay it out right there. 19 weeks, exactly how to quit your job in 19 weeks or less. Read it. Those are the steps. Okay? Or join the Flip to Freedom Academy. Right? Join the Flip to Freedom Academy and um, go through the whole process. And you'll learn the steps to getting started. Okay? But what you do is that now you know the steps, the point, you know, and there's now a reference point to where you go, okay, I'm going to take step by step. What I love about GPS is, you know, ground positioning system, GPS, is that when you're going from point A to point B, is that you get to see your progress along the way. Holy cow, I'm going from, you know, Arizona to Southern California. It's 500 miles or 300 miles or whatever. So I've gone 150 miles. See, the problem with success is when you're on this path, there's no GPS. You don't know how far you've gone. But do you realize that when you get education and you write down your goals and you put yourself in that step and you learn and you expand and you develop and you start moving forward, guess what? You've been 150 miles. You've been 200 miles. You are on the path of progress getting from point A to point B. The problem is you don't have any ground positioning system to see exactly how far you have gone. But just listening to this podcast and, and gathering information and learning education, that is expanding your mind and moving you closer to your goal. Because see, what's going to happen is once you visualize and see that and you do that in the morning and you do it before you go to bed, you really put yourself in that spot of being in point B. When you take yourself through that, okay, when you take yourself through that and you look and you can feel that, well, guess what? Things are going to start popping up in your life. Unexplainable thing. Leads will come in. Um, you'll get maybe a break at work to where you don't have to, you have to work less hours where you can spend more time in your real estate business to, to plan your escape. Things will happen. Things will happen. Okay? So, so the step one is this, is write down specifically and see yourself in that. Step two is visualize it. In the morning and in the evening, before you go to bed and when, you, and when you wake up in the morning, visualize it, feel it, put yourself there, see it. And step number three is take one step each day toward that goal. It doesn't have to be a big step. It could be getting a list from list source of absentee owners. It could be sending out uh, yell letters. It could be writing out by hand yourself 10 yell letters. That's all. It doesn't have to be a lot. 20 yell letters. It might be finding a bandit sign company where you can start putting up bandit signs. It might be setting up, setting up an e-voice account. Now, if you want to know what all this stuff is, you can read the, listen to the previous episodes or, or, or go to flip to freedom um, and, and download the book. I have all this stuff in there. But look what you have to do and take step-by-step-by-step step by step action Little tiny steps each day. Little bite-sized chunks to eat the elephant. Little steps to get from point A to point B. And if you do that, see, that desire, that putting yourself in that spot is going to allow you to take that step. And if you are the person that took that step before and then you kind of lost ground and got off track again, like I said, it's okay. Give yourself a break. Rekindle yourself. Rekindle your fire. Ground yourself on really what you want. Be specific on what you want. Write down what you want. See it. Feel it. Visualize it in the morning. Visualize it at night. And then each day, take one step closer to that goal. And you'll be farther along than you think. Because... Have you ever heard of muscle memory? You know, guys who work out, you know, men or girls who work out, and you work out and you work out, you know, all the time, your muscles almost remember the being working out, being stressed. It's called muscle memory. And it's almost like you that you stretch to a certain point in education and you stretch to a certain point of doing of what you, you know, taking calls or doing whatever you're doing, that you almost, it's like muscle memory. You just kind of slip right into it, fall right back into it again and go, okay, great. I'm at where I'm at now. You don't have to go relearn how to maybe take phone calls or, or talk to sellers or, or buyers or do whatever you're gonna, whatever you're going to do. You kind of just get there. Now you can keep moving forward. And the secret is this, is committing... Now, <clears throat> let's talk about commitment. In the Marine Corps, I spent four years in the United States Marine Corps. One thing about the United States Marine Corps is that there is commitment and discipline. Okay? 
commitment is making a decision. Making a decision that point B or success is what I want. And then committing. Now, what does committing mean? Commit. What does committing mean? <laughs> I'll try to say that. All right. What does committing mean? Committing means that you are all in. It's funny, I played poker at a friend's house this past weekend, and I, I, love, I like playing Texas Hold'em poker. But there is a feeling when you go all in. All in. And you're all in. You can't take it back. You're either in or you're out. Jerry Maguire says, not show friends, it's show business. You're either you're in or you're out. Right? In the Bible it says, what does God say? You either be hot or you be cold. But if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. So when you commit, don't go, well, I'm going to try it. Okay, don't use try around me. You know, guys in the Flip to Freedom Academy, well, I'm going to try to do it and see how it works. You see me, I come back with my comment. Listen, you know what? Just don't do it at all. Either you do it or you don't do it. Don't try it, just do it. Or don't do it. Don't be lukewarm. You either be hot or you be cold. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. That's commitment. Committing to your point B. Committing to your success. Committing to your freedom. Don't be spineless. Just commit to it. And then once you commit to it, there is something inside of you. And the forces come out. And you just... You're committing to your goal. Because if you're committed, and you're not lukewarm, then guess what? When you run into an obstacle, you know the Marine Corps obstacles? You either go around it, you go over it, you dig your way under it, or you blow through it. That's how you have to look at an obstacle. You don't hit an obstacle and go, well, you know, life sucks, and you just, you know, I hit the obstacle, and now I gotta quit. No. Uh-uh. If you're committed, and I'm gonna make it happen at all costs, I don't care what it takes, I am gonna get this to happen no matter what. Then you are gonna blow through that obstacle, you don't care. So you know what? Maybe you have never committed to something ever in your life. Maybe you're afraid to commit. Well, I'm, I'm afraid to go all in. Like I said, get a backbone. Stop being spineless. Commit to something. Give your all to it. Push all the chips all in. Go for it. You know what? Because they never erect a statue. After a critic, or after someone spineless. They erect a statue after a guy who commits, and he becomes great and makes things happen. Now, I'm not saying we're going to have to erect a statue after you, or even after me. But that's what it takes. That's number one. Commit. Number two is discipline. Discipline. In the Marine Corps, discipline. We had to sit in our fighter holes. I was in um, 29 Palms, California. We were on, a, on, on, on an operation, <clears throat> just a training op. Um, and we had to secure a perimeter, this training perimeter. And me and this guy, Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm and I, Malcolm's from Alabama, and uh, cool guy. And he was in my platoon. And we actually had to burrow and we had to dig down. And, uh, and we, dug, we picked a spot. And, and it was in the desert. It's like 120 degrees out in Palm Springs, California. Not Palm Springs. In 29 Palms, California. Where there's a training, a Marine Corps training op out there. And what we did is we dug in. And basically there was this tree. We basically dug this big old hole out. And that's where we stayed for the night. And what we're doing is we were securing the perimeter, and there was um, basically a mock attack on our uh, on our platoon. All right, so we had to we rotated who was going to sleep up through the night. And guess what? We didn't know it, 
But we dug into a bed of scorpions. Baby ones, too. And big ones. So we dug into this bed of scorpions, and we're sitting there. And uh, we didn't realize it till the, mor- till the morning. But we had to sit there. And when you're awake, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and you're on and off every couple hours, guess what? You have to stay awake. You have discipline, because you have someone else's life on the line. And if you fall asleep and go, oh, I just, you know, just fell asleep, it doesn't happen. That's unexcusable. You get your head pounded. In the Marine Corps, you can't do that. But we woke up the next morning, and there was a bed of scorpions down there all around our feet and sleeping all, you know. But guess what? If we would have got stung by that scorpion, I can't go running out of the, you know, out of our little burrow hole there, you know, little bunker hole there. I can't go running, oh my God, I got stung. You can't do that. Go to the, you know, the captain and go, Mr. Captain, I got stung by, I'm not going to do that. No. I'd have to bite my lip until it bled. I don't care. I wouldn't be done. Why? Discipline. Now, you're not in that harsh of a situation as that, but there is discipline. What is discipline? Discipline is saying, I am going to commit to this, and I am going to take one step a day and I'm going to put forth X amount of effort a day or commit to one hour a day to accomplish my goal. Now, when you commit to that one hour a day, right, you have to have the discipline to follow through with it. Okay? You have to have the discipline to do it and not let yourself off the hook. Well, I'll just do it tomorrow. No. You made a commitment and you have discipline, and you do it today. Just like going to the gym. You're going to the gym, guess what? Well, I'm just going to blow off today, I'll just go tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes along, I'm just going to blow it off, I'm going to go the next day. Successful people commit, and successful people are disciplined. So if you want to be successful, you have to commit, and you've got to be disciplined. That's the bottom line. You know? Or, just be average. Just be average and work a job and da da and everything's okay. But you know what? You're not listening to this podcast because you want to be average. You're not listening to this podcast, you know, just to, just to get by. You're listening to this podcast is because there is something inside of you that, that is burning, that you want more. You want to be more. You want to do more. You want to accomplish more. You want more for your family. You want more. Right? Well, that's what's going to get you on track. Following those steps is going to get you on track. And if you are off track, give yourself a break. Follow the steps and make a decision, get committed, and go for it. And guess what? A week from now, two weeks from now, a month from now, you're going to look back and go, holy cow, I cannot believe how far I have come. Three months, you're going to get your first check. You're going to get your first deal. You're going to get things going. You're going to get momentum. You're going to get the fire going. You're going to get excited again. This is going to work, and I'm going to make it work, and it's going to happen. You're going to get, boom! And then the momentum's going to go. Then what happens is the momentum starts taking you. And then that's when it becomes exciting. So, if you would like more from me, Go to flip, the number two freedom.com, flip to freedom.com. And you can download that book, 129 page book for free. Um, you see a video of me, just stick your email address in there and I will email you a special link. And that is it for this week of the Flip to Freedom Academy podcast. It's been fun hanging out with you this week. And remember, Take time in the morning to be grateful. Take time in the morning to reflect. And take time in the morning to 
reconnect with exactly what you want. And guess what? You'll be amazed in a month from now what your life is going to look like. And I want that for you. I really do. So have a rock and roll week. I'll be in California next week at the beach. Um, I'm going to record a podcast from the beach for you. (laughs) So until then, I wish you ultimate success in your real estate investing career. Take care and God bless. (music) 